you know, non-invasive uh, neuromodulation uh, is is obviously very attractive you know, because you know, invasive techniques, you know, like deep brain stimulation, you know, can have associated uh, problems, including you know, uh, surgical complications, infections, you know, hardware problems, and um, that can affect you know quality of life and the effectiveness of a therapy. Well, I think in dystonia we're overall in very early stages for non-invasive neuromodulation. I would distinguish two types in you know, the purely, I would say, non-invasive techniques such as transcranial magnetic stimulation, direct current stimulation. Those have you know, evidence you know, from, from studies limited in, and with not great numbers of patients, you know, but I think enough you know, to say that they, uh, that they can have a beneficial effect, although it tends to be not lasting, uh, so that you know, therapy has to be repeatedly you know, administered. Um, and I would separate that you know, from the newer techniques in for example, high, high frequency focused ultrasound, you know, which is um, marketed as non-invasive in the sense that it does not require an operation, it does not require a burr hole or penetration of the dura with instrumentation, but it is a um, a technique, you know, to to have an ablation. So there is a lesion in the brain, uh, and to me, that is invasive at, at some level. Those that that new technique of performing this older surgery, like ablations, um, lesion-based surgeries is taking off and is taking off in the, has taken off in the tremor world, can be quite effective treatment you know, for, for essential tremor unilaterally. It's been studied you know, for Parkinson's disease, you know, both in tremor, but also now uh, in the subthalamic target you know, for, for Parkinsonian symptoms, even bilaterally. And in few cases, uh, it's been studied you know, for, uh, for dystonia. It, it, the earlier evidence has come from Japan, uh, from you know, individuals with mostly unilateral musicians dystonia but i think you know, we're going to see some developments in that area i mean we know from studies you know done you know, decades ago about the effectiveness of thalamotomies but also polydotomies in in the in the management of of dystonia